In this video, I'll be explaining what an operational amplifier is, and I'll be going through certain characteristics of an ideal op amp that are very essential when analyzing circuits that contain op amps. Now, first of all, what is an op amp, and why is it so important? An op amp or operational amplifier is an integrated circuit that increases the magnitude of its input signal. For example, an AC voltage signal of 1 mV in amplitude can be converted to about 10 volts by an amplifier, and even higher in certain cases. Now the most common general purpose voltage amplifier, the LM741, comes equipped with 8 pins, which include the inverting and non-inverting inputs, more on that later, the output, 2 voltage supply pins, 2 offset null pins, and a no connect pin. Now the circuit diagram for an op amp is simply this triangle showing the two inputs. That is the non-inverting input which is showed by the plus sign and the inverting input which is shown by the minus sign. We can also observe the output and the two power supply terminals. If you're finding this video valuable, let me know by hitting the like button. Also, I make electrical engineering videos like this one, and so subscribe and hit the bell for notifications so you never miss a video. Let's get back into it. In most circuit analysis, at least in lower level classes, the offset and the no connect pins are not included on the circuit diagram. The two power terminals are sometimes ignored as well. Now, as I mentioned previously, the amplifier takes a weaker signal and increases its magnitude. Now, it does this by a factor, and this factor is what we call gain of the amplifier. So for an amplifier with V1 and V2 as the two inputs, the output voltage will be A times V1 minus V2. Now you may be wondering why one of the inputs is called an inverting input and the other a non-inverting input. Let's say we decide to supply a 1 mV sine wave to V1, which is the non-inverting input, and we ground V2. Vr will simply be A times V1, since V2 is 0. And the output will have the same phase as V1, but a much higher magnitude. Now when we ground V1 and supply our signal to V2 instead, V out becomes minus A times V2. The minus sign attached to V out at the moment shows that the output is now 180 degrees out of phase, or in other words, the signal is now inverted. Now that we understand how both inputs work, let's talk about the most common term you hear about when talking about op amps, and that's the open loop gain. Before explaining what the open loop gain is, first of all, it's important to understand what loop we're referring to. We're referring to a connection between either of the inputs and the output, which would look something like this. Therefore, the open loop gain is simply the gain when the loop is not closed. It usually ranges from 10 to the power 5 to 10 to the power 6 for most amplifiers, but it's also limited by the biasing voltages. Let's consider this voltage transfer curve. As seen here, there are two saturation points which signify the two biasing voltages. The inclined section of the curve has a slope which is equal to the gain of the amplifier. The vertical axis is the output of the amplifier, and the horizontal axis is the differential input of V1 minus V2. Assuming the slope is 10 to the power 5, a 1 microvolt differential voltage when traced onto the curve will result in an output voltage of about 1 volt. For a 10 microvolt signal, the output can be traced to about 10 volts. Beyond a certain point, the output voltage saturates or remains the same. Now say the bias voltage is 15 volts, then the maximum output voltage that can be obtained is 15 volts, regardless of the input voltage. Now if you go in the opposite direction, that is applying a negative differential voltage or grounding V1 and supplying the voltage to V2, a minus 1 microvolt signal gives a minus 1 voltage output signal and a minus 10 microvolt gives a minus 10 voltage signal. Now if the negative biasing voltage is minus 15, then V out saturates at minus 15 volts. Now there are certain key features to note when talking about ideal op amps. Before I go on to explain these features, first of all, it's important to understand how the op amp looks on the inside. Take a look at this simplified diagram of what the op amp looks. Now, obviously, the amplifier consists of several transistors in various configurations. This is just a simplified view. RI here represents the input impedance on the op amp, and RO represents the output impedance. In an ideal op amp, the input impedance must be infinite or high enough to ensure that the voltage being applied at the inputs are directly applied to the op amp. The output impedance must also be zero to avoid dividing the amplified voltage with the output impedance and a load connected at the output. Also, the range of frequencies from the input that can be amplified must range from zero till infinity. Or in other words, the op amp must have an infinite bandwidth. The ideal op amp must also have an infinite gain and must output zero volt when the differential input is zero. Here's a summary of the characteristics of the ideal op amp. 
First of all, it must have an infinite input impedance. Two, the output impedance must be zero. Three, it must have an infinite bandwidth. And four, it must have an infinite open loop gain. Note that the bandwidth of an amplifier can be tempered with by introducing components that vary current and voltage with frequency. If you'd like to find out more, check out this video that talks about capacitors and AC circuits. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next.